Well, I don't think anybody could have actually predicted that after just one season of this save, we've managed to get Everton back into Europe and lift the trophy all at the same time. Not bad for squads who were willing to commit mutiny against me just a few months before, but that's behind us now. And now we can prepare this summer with the transfers to take us on a nice little European adventure next season. Hello and welcome back to my FM24 save with Everton episode 9. My name is Craig and coming up on today's episode we do indeed have all the transfers that will be going in and out of the club which we will be going through as they happen which is something I haven't done in a long time so there's going to be a lot of experimentation with how this is going to go in the edit. But first things first we are going to go through the season review which is even nicer now that we have a trophy on the screen first trophy of fm24 i love that i truly do love that and if you have been loving uh, that we have won a trophy in our first season and we've got the europa league coming up next season make sure that you hit the like button down below and smash the big red subscribe button so you don't miss the upcoming season where it's everton in europe oh yeah this is gonna be good right let's go through the season review just to start there has actually been quite a lot of transfers that have come in despite the fact that we didn't actually make any in the summer well we did actually what am i trying to say Jewsbury hall and jamie vardy of course being the ones that we made in the summer of course the likes of dan juma uh jack harrison and beto had already uh, been agreed by the club as per real life transfers on the dates that they actually happened but the best two that have come in have been angel Correa and Giovanni Simeone, the son of Diego Simeone by the way. I'm not sure if I mentioned that in a previous episode, I might have done already, but it took me a while to realise, oh that's who you are. Certainly he was definitely worth the purchase, 16 goals in 20 appearances, 17 starts actually, so almost a goal for every start he's made. The board are very pleased with the deal to sign him. Angel Correa as well from Atletico Madrid, obviously the team who are managed currently by Diego Simeone. A lot of Diego Simeone in this <laughs> series so far. Uh, he's got six goals and five assists in 18 appearances. Very impressive for £23 million. So these two players combined, £31 million. That's got to be good business right there. That is excellent business. The board are delighted with the deal to sign him, again due to a lower wage. Dan Juma was in on loan, excited to sign him on loan. It's just a shame that he missed out on the FA Cup final at the end due to injury. Uh, Dewsbury Hall the same. Jose Campana was a free in January. He only made seven starts but he bagged six goal contributions in overall 17 appearances. That is not bad. Jamie Vardy more of a bench player which is probably what I bought him for in the first place. Nine goals not bad. Uh, Sergio Gomez, Jack Harrison, good backup players as well. Beto, probably very disappointing. The board are happy to get him in. If, if we can sell him on this summer, I'll be happy. Zach Steffen, I want him gone. It, at £1.3 million, pounds, I'm not too fussed that we bought him for that, but he's just nowhere near ready to actually challenge Jordan Pickford for a starting spot. And Pierre Kalulu, uh, I think he'll really come into his own next season once he gets over all the injuries he's been suffering so far. So in the Premier League we finished in 10th and we are qualified for the Europa League thanks to our FA Cup triumph. Look at that. I mean okay it's not the hardest draw, uh, sorry the hardest run in the world. The hardest team we faced was Brighton and Hove Albion. Mid table in the Premier League defeated, Norwich in the Championship defeated, Brighton were the hardest team judging by the fact as well we only beaten 5-4. I say only 5-4. We, we had a heck of a comeback in that game. And of course we smashed uh, championship winners Leicester City 5-1 in the final. The Premier League again 10th place finish. Which considering Everton's last two seasons in the league. I think Everton would take that in real life. And the Cowboy Cup we got knocked out in the fourth round. No one cares. Uh, biggest win a 7-0 drubbing of Burnley. Match to remember 2-2 against Manchester United. That's when we came back from two goals down. An impressive result. And then beating Newcastle 2-1, which is probably even more memorable. That was for goal of the season, wasn't it? That was Decore. I can't even remember what his goal was. And we can't see it either. 
Uh, and with club reputation, it's still three and a half star national. It was never going to change in the first season. Sponsorship is up. That's because it's the first season. Uh, total merchandise sales, 2.69 million. 20,000 shirts sold. Correa is the top shirt seller. He's only been here for five months. Pickford is second. Simeone is third. He's only been here a few months. And then Decore and McNeil as well. I kind of agree with all five of those. Pickford Def and Decore and McNeil, not a great surprise. Simeone and Correa have really settled in and hopefully we'll see more from them next season. This is the best 11 according to the season that we just had. Pickford in goal, a back four of Mikolenko, Tarkovsky, Branthwaite and Patterson. Onana at the base in the midfield with Decore and Ghana ahead of him. Uh, Danjum on the left wing, Correa on the right wing and Simeone the man up front. So I have to agree with every single one of those players. Of course Mikolenko is leaving as I mentioned in the last episode. He has been sold to I think it's Al Ittihad in Saudi Arabia for £22 million so he will be going. Uh, manager awards I won absolutely nothing. Oh, apparently I played for England 26 times. Decore fans player of the season. Young player of the season James Garner. Very much agree with that. Signing of the season is Simeone. Yeah, it's either Simeone or Correa. I'm happy with either. Uh, top goal scorer, Simeone with 16 goals. That kind of says how little in goals we scored before uh, we bought Simeone. I think it was Calvert-Lewin who was our top scorer with 11. And Simeone just blew him away. So uh, I'm more than happy with that. Garner with 12 assists. That makes sense. Jamie Vardy with 5 player of the match awards. Decore, highest average rating and Pierre Kalulu most passes. Not bad for... Someone who will probably be a ball playing defender for us next season. Uh, most goals by a player in the season, 16 for Simeone again. And most goals by a player in the match is Tarkovsky. Tarkovsky is the only one to get a hat trick for us in the league. I'm sure Simeone has a hat trick. If not, the fact that we've got a 31 year old centre back scoring hat tricks for us is pretty damning. M Mikolenko with the worst discipline, it's not going to matter so much because he is going to be gone. And most clean sheets, John Pickford. 13 clean sheets. That just kind of says how crucial he is to us. Uh, our, our hard work and effort paid off on the pitch. And such a feat didn't go unrewarded. Our end of season award ceremony. That's right. The supporter profile. We have gained 500,000 followers on social media. Wow. We, have, we, we didn't even have a million followers before. That's interesting. Fair weather supporters have gone up by 17%. So that's this pink just here. Family is down and oh no, fair weather it is actually 17% of the overall supporters profile. Hardcore has dropped. They'll be fine, they'll be around all the time. They're the hardcore, remember? Uh club vision and expectations. So they are expecting us. Let's go into negotiate here. So I can see it better. So they've added in make the most of set pieces. Oh well. I need to sort out the set pieces anyway this summer because defensively we've been woeful from set pieces. Grow the club's reputation. That's not just my job. I can do all I can on the pitch, but off the pitch, that's down to you guys up in the board. Uh, next season, maintain a Premier Division top half finish. So they just want to finish in the top 10. I think we should be aiming more than that, but I'm just going to leave it as that for now. Depending who obviously we get in this season, uh, this summer. Then we can see if we can aim higher. Uh, Pickford, Coleman and Gwei are our team leaders. Coleman and Gwei are probably going to be leaving this summer. So we're going to need to replace them. The likes of Garner, Tarkovsky, Patterson need to be stepping up as team leaders. Uh, we're going to discuss the plans for the squad for next season. So our Premier League aims. Uh, qualify for the UEFA Champions League. Might be a bit much. Uh, qualify for the Europa League. When you come back from your breaks, we're going to get stuck into the challenge of finishing in the top half. I think that's about fair. That's exactly what the board want. Uh, Europa League aims for next season. I think we should be looking for at least the knockout rounds. You aren't being ambitious enough. Wow. Okay. Okay. Let's, I'm going to back down on that. We're going to aim higher. It's good to see you pushing us to be better. We need to make sure we start the season striving to do as well as we possibly can. Uh, I'm liking that. Pump the fists. Pump the fists. That's what I want to see. Uh, I want to outline some... Nope. I'd like to focus on the progress being made. Do, 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 do. 
I think we did a good job working towards the vision outlined by the board. Yeah, I think you have. I adopt our style of play. What? I've actually not had that before. This is, so that was about style of play. I'm not sure we've nearly accomplished in this style as we should be, so that's surprising to hear. Right, well, that's a bit disappointing, but hopefully they'll come back in pre-season and be in higher spirits. I've never had that before about um, the style of play. So the team reports, so by the looks of it, fairly strong, though defence needs a big improvement. We already know we need new left-backs. Sergio Gomez is going to go back to Manchester City after his loan spell. Patterson, he'll only get better on the right wing, uh, sorry, at right-back. He's got four-star potential ability. I think we'll be absolutely fine. Ben, uh, ben Godfrey can also play there. If we can get another right back in, I will be happy. Uh, the squad has gone on holiday. That's absolutely fine. So, now the fun begins of transfers. I've already arranged for three players who are going to be coming in. I will go through those. Actually, we'll get some match reports for the Euros. I forgot the Euro 24 is happening this summer. But as the players who I've arranged to come in arrive, I will be going through those. I think the first will be around sort of mid-June. But for now, I think it's going to be about who can we bring in to improve the squad and who can we sell on. Uh, we already know a few players are going to be going. In fact, I think we're losing about six players this summer. So Danjuma, Hammerson and Gomez are finishing their loans. That's fine. Uh, Hammerson and Gomez are not going to come back. Gwei is going to be leaving. Coleman's going to be leaving. Definitely Deli Ali is going to be leaving. He's dropped so far. He's now leading League One player. That that just says everything to me. Danjuma, I would like to bring him back. But unless Villarreal just want to let him go for less than £40 million. Pounds. Oh, it's actually worth mentioning the budgets as well. We have £37.6 million pounds to spend. And how much do we have on the wage budget? I think just under 400,000 so not too bad the projections I mean it doesn't matter after the second season because quite frankly I'm not going to be here after next season we're just here now for the European adventure that's what we're here for and I am all for it which means I might I might just go a little bit mad in this transfer window we'll see what we can cook up with players that we need to bring in so the aims left back of which, wow, okay, I've not seen this before, a question mark, because we have no players there for next season. That's hilarious. The same for right back, uh, sorry, for right wing as well, apparently. Interesting. So we want to strengthen left back, possibly right back. Oh, Mason Holgate's got to come back, wow. Uh, the wings, and preferably get in one or two more strikers as well. Midfield. Maybe another youngster in midfield and definitely goalkeeper. So the wings, fullback positions, goalkeeper and maybe another striker as well. Less important would be a midfielder as well. I think we're decent there. Centre back, I think we are okay there as well. I've just given away one of the players that I'm bringing in. But we'll look over him once he arrives. For now, let me just go and see what magic I can work in the transfer window. Well, here we go. The first signings of the summer have been confirmed. Umar Soleil is the first signing in the door. 24-year-old uh, French centre-back. Not capped, but that could change now that he is in the Premier League. Three and a half star accountability. Nothing more in potential, of course, but at 24 years old. And with FM24, apparently players up to the age of about, I think, 26 can still technically grow. So he's got a about two more years worth of growth maybe in him as well as the fact that he's a consistent performer uh, he can play in a couple of positions oh hang on what's the other position oh defensive midfield as well oh sweet that covers us then for defensive midfield that's absolutely fine uh, we brought him in for 12 million pounds from Red Bull Salzburg in Austria where he was effectively a regular although I think he missed about half the games last season don't know why but he did well enough Got a couple of assists as well. Uh, they did make a profit off of us for him, but oh, that's to be expected. He is, however, well over six feet tall, so the big man up at corners. Another big, tall centre-back who will hopefully be a threat at corners. In fact, he's got a jumping reach of 16. Hello, 
Attacking corner threat confirmed. We do, however, have another left back. Well, I say another left back. We've got at least one for the new season. Ryan Sesenyon, 24-year-old English fullback, as well as a left winger as well. So quite handy. He can play anywhere up and down the left-hand side. Uh, we brought him in on a free from Tottenham at the end of his contract. Two and a half star capability, three star potential. I think he's also 24. Yes, he is. He only made two appearances for Tottenham last season. Was never really a regular for them. But he is, obviously, he being English, it counts towards, what's it called again? That's it, the minimum squad registration rule for continental and domestic. Oh, fantastic. That will come in handy for the Europa League. Fairly consistent. And he enjoys big matches. The only downside is he's not very tall. He's less than six feet tall. I know he's a fullback, but tall fullbacks do have their advantage. He's not one, but he's coming in as a squad player. So still on the lookout for a starter left back. And we have our what will be our youngest player in the entire squad at 20 years old. Yasser Asprila. Two star currency, but five star potential for the 20 year old Colombian international. He can play anywhere across the attacking midfield and as a striker. I mean, he looks quite useful, to be fair, across all four areas. He is currently a good Skybet Championship player, so he is the definition of that young player I just wanted to bring in. And he could still come good this season. He'll, he'll definitely get cup matches, possibly even the Europa League, depending who we get. We've brought him in for £12 million from Watford. We've effectively brought him for his potential. It's not going to be realised in this save, obviously. We've only got one more season. But I think he could still do something for us, not necessarily in the Premier League, but in the other competitions. Now, that's just three players that we have confirmed bringing in. There's another two that will hopefully be coming in. And that's because one of them, oh, hang on, uh, Sasenio is going to be a fullback. Yeah, fullback on support. And that's because um, one of them has been confirmed, but another player who has actually not been fully confirmed yet, so who is still in contract negotiations, as I'm just trying to figure out where Yasser Asprilo is probably going to be playing. I'm probably going to say on the right wing. Absolutely fine. And that is because, hang on, go to transfers. We are bidding for a goalkeeper, Justin Bijlo, 26-year-old in a uh, Dutch international, trying to buy him from Feyenoord. I think about 19, 20 million pounds, but he's someone who's going to be pushing Jordan Pickford, hopefully, for that starting berth, three and a half star current ability. If he comes in, then I will show him actually coming in and effectively what he will be looking like because this is the scout report that they've given me and it's not always going to be that accurate. So, next time you see me will probably be at the start of July. Hopefully, there'll be a couple more players at least that I'll be able to tell you about. As far as outgoings go, no one has actually left yet because nobody is willing to bid for any of my players at the moment. The transfer window has just officially opened, so that might change in the next couple of weeks. But I'll be able to give you an update when we get to the start of July. And that will mean, of course, freebies for players who have just been released. Right, we've made it to the 1st of July. And for goodness sake, morale manager has struck again because now players are unhappy that Vitaly... Mikolenko has left the club. As you can see, he's gone to Al Ittihad in Saudi Arabia. This was arranged like back in January or February. So, in fact, no, this is arranged in March. But obviously, he's stuck with us for the rest of the season. But now the squad have decided they are completely unhappy. And also, just to confirm, Idris Gueye has also left us as well. 34 year old left at the end of his contracts. Yeah, he was kind of a regular player for us, but we have actually replaced him. We will come back to that in a moment, because firstly, I need to deal with a bunch of unhappy players. So, apparently some of you aren't happy with how things have been going. We shouldn't... Uh, sorry, you shouldn't have sold Vitaly Mikolenko. We're all owed an explanation. Oh, God. Guys, guys, guys. I'm trying to reshape this squad here. Mikolenko wanted to leave. What do you want me to do? I'm a step ahead of you guys already and have a few targets in mind to replace him with. I really don't want to promise that. It's a strong squad and we won't feel his loss. 
Uh, moving him on was the best option for the club. He was becoming a bad influence, actually. Do you know what? I'm going to go for this. He had made it very clear that he wanted to leave. I couldn't stand in his way. Yeah, you know what? That is the truth. He wanted to leave for Arsenal. That's fair enough. There's no point keeping hold of someone who doesn't want to be here. I don't know why players are disappointed at that. If someone doesn't want to be here, I'm not sure I have any choice but to, uh, to try to sign a suitable replacement. Don't want this to cause a problem any more than all of you. See, the thing is, I don't want to make a promise because I don't know if that's actually going to work. So I think that was very productive. Yeah, some of them are going to be let down. But what more do you want me to do? Oh, oh, oh God. 11 of them. Morale manager has struck again. Goodness me. Right, so the managerial support is packed to average. Oh, my goodness. Maybe I should have just made that promise. Because I'm going to be signing a left back anyway. In the meantime, we have confirmed the signing of another midfielder, Gaius Makuto, a defensive midfielder who is the replacement for Adrisa Gweyi. 26-year-old Congolese international. He is three and a half star capability, nothing more in potential. But he is going to be a very good player for us. He has he is coming in from Boa Vista in Portugal. We've brought him in on a free. And look at that stretch. Just look at the physicals overall. His natural fitness, his stamina, his strength. He's basically a brick outhouse at the back. Well, not at the back, but in front of the back four. So that's absolutely fine. But his arrival has just been completely overshadowed here. I mean, what is going on there? We are going to be looking at getting another left back in, obviously. Because at the moment, we've only got Ryan Sassanyon, who I've introduced earlier on. And Branthwaite, but he's going to be coming in. Uh, not coming in, sorry. He's going to be playing as a centre-back, so... We need to do a lot more in terms of left back. In fact, let's just have another look. Scouted players. In fact, saying that, there are three players now who are unattached. So let's just have a quick look. Uh, contract status, completely unattached. They're offering me Ben Me. 34 years old. As if I'm going to go for him. Who's this guy? Ayago. Two to four weeks of, with a broken, con, broken collarbone. I mean, he looks decent, doesn't he? Granted, he's injured. He's got a broken collarbone, so he's out for up to a month. But he'll be back for the start of the season. He's played for Augsburg. So he's played in the Bundesliga. Decent Premier League. I mean, it's worth me just having a look at Ashley Young. Uh, imagine we just bring Ashley Young back. That's not happening. That That is not happening under any circumstances. I'm going to go have a look through and see if we can find another left back. At least one more. Right back, I think we're okay for the moment. Why Mason Holgate is in there he, now that he's come back from a loan? I have no idea. Another striker we would like to bring in as well. And if we can, maybe another right winger. Unless we're just going to be focusing on some of the youngsters. I mean, Chimiti, but he's only three-star potential now. I'll see what we can come up with as far as free transfers go. Because we do still have some money to spend. I mean, we've got 17.3 million to spend. We have roughly, I think, two to three hundred thousand pounds left in the wage budget as well. So we can do something with that with regards to getting a left back and a striker in. It's just going to be a question of what we can actually find and who of any quality is actually willing to join us. So I'll check back in once we've had some movements on that front. But this just annoys me greatly. Okay, so we have actually gone so far forward now. I'm actually at the beginning of the season. I spent the last month and a half scrambling around for not only a left back to try and solve the mutiny that's going on. Thanks to Jordan Pickford and Powell's. But also for a striker, because you've probably just about seen right behind my head. Um, we've had some major, well, at least one major sale. May as well start with that. Beto has gone. Our striker, who only arrived last year because it was already arranged with Everton. that There was nothing I could do about that. Well, we sold him for £29 million and already Fulham have put a £42 million uh, price tag on his head. Is that his release clause? Yeah, it is. Although he has a relegation release clause, which is probably very likely, actually, for Fulham. Sorry, Fulham. But I sold Beto because, at the end of the day, five goals in 19 games. Yes, he didn't have that much of a chance, but I just preferred Simeone over him. 
Beto is not my kind of striker. Six goals and an assist as well over 20 appearances. It's just not becoming of a striker for my team. He needs to be someone who is actually forcing his way into the team and actually scoring. He's got great physicals, but I just didn't feel that he'd be a great fit for my club. So off he goes. He goes to Fulham and possibly there's a transfer going on possibly for Chimiti as well, who also joined last summer, also to Fulham. Then willing to pay £11 million for him. So £40 million for two of our strikers is not bad business. Especially when one of them has been shipped out on loan for the entire season in the championship. Mason Holgate has got... Oh, he's gone on loan. Actually, yeah, that's behind my head. So he's gone on loan. Was hoping to get rid of him permanently, but that didn't happen. Andre Gomez has gone on a free to Leicester City. Mikolenko, we already know about, as do we know about Idrissa Gueye. And a couple of youngsters have also gone as well. Anybody else of note? Uh, Neil Morpé has gone for £2.2 .2 million. Thank goodness to San Etienne. Bye bye. See you later. Actually, no, not see you later. See you never. Absolute waste of money. And the fact that Everton got fleeced 27, no, sorry, £12 million for him for 27 appearances and one goal. Disgusting. I can't believe Bison sold Morpé for that much to Everton. Shambles, really. But otherwise, it was all just youngsters other than that going on free or alone. Also, Seamus Coleman has uh, retired. He has decided to go for Pastures New. I think there was another player who's released as well. Uh, let's have a look. Delhi Ali has, of course, gone as well. We all knew he was going to go. Andy Lonergan, yeah, our reserve goalkeeper. He has also gone. I'm not going to bother showing him because at the end of the day, uh, he was not exactly a player that we was ever going to use. If I tried to use him last season, he wasn't even registered in the Premier League, so what was the point? Players who came in, uh, Justin Bijlow, I did speak about him before, but I didn't mention that he has officially signed the 26-year-old Dutch international goalkeeper. He's going to be the backup to Jordan Pickford. He comes in for £19 million from Feyenoord in the Dutch Eredivisie. Uh, 37 goals conceded last season. That may seem like a lot, but he still performed very well. For, I, I don't know where Feyenoord actually finished in Eredivisie. It's not a loaded league, unfortunately. But he is a good Premier League player, so he'll be able to play back up. If not, maybe challenge for the first uh, team or starter goalkeeper over Pickford. Especially if Pickford continues his mutiny. And uh, he's also a three-star current ability as well. Not bad for a Dutch international. Uh, Gaius Makuta, we went through him. Back on the 1st of July. Alex Crow. Now he's a player I've actually had before in one of my old series. Unemployed to Legend. Way back in a previous FM. Solid uh, backup defensive midfielder. Physically, mentally. He's got what we need. 26 year old Czech. Uh, sorry, Czechia international. Probably didn't need him. Quite honestly. If Makuta is going to be playing there. But yeah, I'm not going to be fussy about an extra midfielder. He came in on a free anyway. He's not on the highest wages either. £49,500 a week. He'll be fine. Thomas Lamar. Fun transfer, this one. A former player that I've had as well in Unemployed to Legend back on FM23. But in this case, he is in his 20s still. And he's still very, very good. He can play left wing. He can play in central midfield. Even attacking midfield, if we do need to go to that sort of formation in a match. He can also play left wing back at a push. Which is not too bad if we have no left backs going. Yes, he's on a stupid amount of money, one hundred and fifty-five thousand pounds, but for three and a half star accountability, and he arrived for ten million pounds. It'll go up to twelve million probably, but that's still a bargain for a French international, a World Cup winner, I believe as well. If I just check here, he's won five medals, so league on. Yep, with Monaco. He's won La Liga with Atletico Madrid and the World Cup as well in 2018 and the Spanish Cup with Atletico. Just last season, actually. So he's also a cup winner last season, just like we are. Fantastic. Uh, Timothy Castagna. Now, you'll probably notice the price and think, what on earth? £35 million. We did overpay massively for his, this fullback. A fullback, granted, that can cover left and right back. But it is very, very overpriced. We bought him in. Oh, we bought him in from Fulham. Right, that explains how Fulham were able to pay for Beto. 
Um, okay, that's interesting. But regardless, he does give us a left back now that Mikolenko and Sergio Gomez have left the club. Along with Ryan Sassanion, so hopefully Castagno will be the starter. Sassanion can be the backup, which is fine. But yes, it's not all up front, by the way, that £35 million. It is on instalments, which is absolutely fine because we're only here for one more season. And our final signing so far has been Joshua Zerxi. He literally came in just before I hit records. 23-year-old Dutch former under-21 international. Comes in 3.5-star accountability, 4-star potential. Good Premier League player. He is the replacement for uh, Beto. He is also almost as tall as Beto as well. 193 centimeters. What is that? Is that like six foot four? I need to. I need to see if I can get this converted to like feet and inches because that's how I recognize how tall a person is. Yeah, 45 million pounds from Bologna in Serie A, but he was a regular for them and he was playing well last season. 12 goals and 36 league appearances and three assists. 13 and 3, so th 16 goal contributions in 38 appearances. Not bad for a striker who probably will be back up to Simeone. But he'll still be ahead of Jamie Vardy, who is still on our bench, by the way. He's still there. But overall, that is the transfer activity that we have done so far. And that has brought us to the start of the season. We'll show you the schedule in just a moment. And the season preview is saying 11th. I mean, we were 14th, 15th predicted last season, so that's not too bad. We have improved. Maybe we can make a play for the lower European spots, like 7th, 8th position. Of course, there's going to be five teams now in Europe uh, because... Oh, sorry, the Champions League, because obviously the new former has come in from Season 2 now. Overall, I feel we have improved this squad uh, quite well. I mean, Pickford, he was... Pickford, he's just come back from an injury. He's still unhappy, so... If he doesn't perform for us in goal, Bijlo can go in. Otherwise, you've got Castagna on the left. Uh, I don't know why Kal uh, Kalulu is on the right-hand side. So, um, I'm going to have to do sort something out off-camera. Uh, Makuta will start at the base in the midfield instead of Kral. You've still got Dewsbury Hall and Garner in midfield. Correa on the right wing. Thomas Lamar would be on the left wing, but he is currently on international... Oh, he was. He's just come back, but he's tired, so he probably won't feature in the first game of the season. Of course, Simeone will be the man up front. We're not going to play the game in today's episode. That will be on Monday. It'll be the first two games in the league, so home against Chelsea. Tasty. And then away at Nottingham Forest. Before we then get into the European adventure, the Europa League, of course, this season, that is pretty much going to be our main uh, focus for the episodes because Everton in Europe, it's something that any Everton fan would take at the moment and that's what I hope to bring for you next week but first up on Monday let's see how this squad does against Chelsea and Nottingham Forest in the league oh also before I go uh, the finances wise we have about three million pounds left to actually spend and we are just inside about 60,000 left on the wage budget which isn't too bad the overall balance is still very very healthy so if any more signings need to be made Maybe we'll ask the board for a little bit more money for deadline day. If you have enjoyed today's episode, and this has actually been spread over two or three days worth of recording, because that's how long transfers take for me at the moment, make sure that you hit the like button down below and smash the big red subscribe button so you don't miss the upcoming European adventure for Everton this season. This is going to be our final season, regardless of what happens. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you for your support on the series and the channel so far. And I look forward to seeing you all in the next video.